is two plus politics now amid widespread insecurity, which has taken an alarming turn in some states of the Federation, among which are Kaduna, Niger, Imo, Katsina, and Zamfara states, among others, the Southern Kaduna People's Union, Sukapu, and other leaders of crisis ridden communities in Kaduna state have called the federal government to ensure that the prevailing insecurity is brought under reasonable control for smooth conduct of the impending 2023 general elections. Now, they contended that, the, that though the terrorists have succeeded in sacking and taking over some communities in the state, with more efforts from government towards securing the state for the conduct of successful polls, the impact of security challenges would be minimal. And joining us is Professor Chris Mokobia, who is the convener Country First Movement. Uh, Professor Mokobia, thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. It's my pleasure to be on with you. Great. Let's start by looking at the security situation in the country. I mean, never in the history of Nigeria have terrorists been bold-faced enough to um, threaten the president, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. We've, we've seen that uh, in 2022. We've seen that certain schools were shut down uh, in the federal cap capital territory at some point because of a, a terrorist scare. Um, I, I mean, the list is endless as to what's going on across the country. And we're getting ready amidst all of that for an election come 2023. Um, where do we even start from to deal with this issue? The, the term is hard rending. It bothers every sincere Nigeria. It bothers everyone who's committed to the beloved community. It is a tragedy of sorts that we live in a country where villains, bandits, terrorists, if you like, uh, because the new cliche is a non gunman threatening the state. And it is so bad. But just a few days ago, Nigeria was categorized as the second most terrorized country in the world after Iraq. It is also harrowing that as you and I talked just yesterday, a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria was almost killed and about 10 persons in his convoy lost their lives. That's what the news is has told us. And as we progress towards 2023, it gives every sincere fit man sufficient cause to worry. But I want to say that uh, much as it was the what we had in 2014-2015, uh, a few weeks to the la that, that election, the 2015 election, um, Good luck, Billy Jonathan was able to help in the terrorists and the bandits at that point. Recovered about 17 local governments in the northeast, and then they were able to hold the 2015 election. I hope and pray that this government will cease to play politics with matters of national security. I pray that those who are politicking the terrible situation would cease to pol politic with these issues and think about how we make our country safe and better. Because when a terrorist or the bandit comes for you, they do not ask whether you're Christian or Muslim. They do not ask whether you're Igbo, Aosa, or Yoruba, or from the minorities. They do not ask whether you're from the North or the South. They just dish villainy. They just dish banditry. They kill the hapless, they maim and rape women. And so at the point is that we are as a nation, is a call for every sincere Nigerian to not only lampoon the situation, but prevail on government to do that which is needful, right and right. I, I'm curious, Professor. Um you said something about the government politicking with the issue of insecurity. But could it really be politicking? Could it also be that maybe the government is overwhelmed, overstretched, um, somewhat bereft of ideas? 
I mean, because I'm trying to understand why government would be, have to be lampooned to do its job, especially a job that is their number one responsibility, protecting lives and properties of Nigerians. Have you noticed that there's something they do? Every so often, there is villainy. Every so often, there is terror. Every so often, Nigerians are mowed down and killed. Rather than take responsibility, government is either throwing plastic platitudes, they are either telling us, oh, we shall, promissory notes that are never cashable. And then what bothers me the most is that when we challenge them, when we lampoon them, they tell us that it was better or that it is better now than 2014, 2015 which is a colossal lie, which is very untrue and unfair to the Nigerian estate. Because within the last seven years, we have lost more lives. Like you noted in your opening remark, schools were forced to close down in the FCT. A National Guard was attacked in Kubwa or, or, or Buari. For the first time in the history of our nation, the Nigerian law school will not hold his call to bar at the law school property. They came to town. That's how bad it is. And so when we lampoon government, when we challenge government, we're not saying that because we're of the Labour Party or the PDP or any other party. We're saying that because, like you noted, the primary responsibility of government is the protection of lives and properties, but largely this government has failed to do that. Where do we go from here in closing? Um, where do we go from here? Because you see, like I said also at the beginning, elections are underway. Uh, the 28th of this month, the, there's going to be the lift on the ban for campaigning, and so it begins in earnest. What should the average Nigerian and voter be having at the back of their mind, especially when they're not safe? to even go out to vote? No, the first thing every Nigerian, the average Nigerian must do is to be circumspect and careful, is to be able to look above one's shoulder. Prayerfully watch whatever state protect, and then ask the National Security Agency, agencies, I mean, the police, the Nigerian army, the, the road safety, the paramilitary organizations like the civil defense and all that, to sit up and do what is equal, right and right, which is the protection of lives and properties. And then above all, the political class, those who are going to be in the field campaigning, must be careful not to exacerbate tension, must be careful to deal with issues, campaign on issues, rather than mock slinging. But be careful not to preach the messages that divide, but present before the Nigerian people issues that will locate our country on the pathway to revival, the pathway to, to growth. Because seven except that is done, if we continue the way we are, if the politicians continue to divide and preach ethnic and religious messages, then we're in trouble. Because I, I say without a provocation that it appears like the Nigerian security agencies are overstretched. Hmm. So we must be one another's keeper. We must protect each other. We must push and preach the message of peace. Okay. Why it's with politics? Well, Professor Chris Mokobi uh, is. Uh, um, uh, well, I, I think that um, this is the point where we all just say our Hail Marys and hope for the best uh, in, in the coming future. Thank you so much, Professor Chris Mokobi, for speaking with us on the segment. We appreciate it. The pleasure is mine. All right. And that's it on the show tonight. We'll be back tomorrow talking for development on the biggest political stories across the country. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.